What is up you guys, I hope you're doing well. I'm Tony Fuentes and welcome back to the Edit Like series. In this case, we're gonna edit like Ray Live Z. Now, Ray, or Ray Mercado is his name, is a photographer from New York, an urban photographer that has a very cinematic style that resembles a teal and orange with a little twist in it. So this style was recommended by one of you guys in the comment section. So remember, if you want me to analyze a style in particular and make a preset out of it, just put it down in the comments down below. Now, if you watched this series before, you know that first we jump into Instagram and analyze the style, break it down, see with which camera they shoot and how they shoot the photographs. And then we jump into Lightroom, create a preset and apply it to different situations to see how it performs. Now, if you're not interested in the whole tutorial and you just want the final results, you can always buy the edit like preset pack, which is linked down below on my shop if you want to support me. Now, back to the tutorial, let's jump into Instagram and analyze his style. So this is his profile on Instagram, Ray Live Z, Ray Lives. I don't know how to pronounce that. Instagram handles are always so hard. So you can go and support him by following him and you can also see his work on his shop. But let's go down to the style first. The first thing that we can see is a very cinematic style. You can see a lot of shots in the rain and in the snow in particular. And the first thing that comes to mind is the overall bluish palette that we can see. So if we click on the first image, here we can see that everything is blue. The darkest parts of the image are completely black, but the shadows are tending towards these bluish tones. And immediately we can see that it's not a typical teal and orange look. It's more like a dark blues against yellows, nothing more like teal or orange. Here we can see that the blues are very dark in the shadows. And then we have this yellowish vibe in the highlights and in the whites. So this style is very nice. Again, the photographs are very nicely exposed, particularly because the light is very diffused in the center of New York City under the shade of the big buildings. Again, the tendency is heading towards that bluish tones in the shadows, as we can see in most of all of the images. And then in the highlights over here, we, we can see the yellowish tones in the sky. Now in some warmer images where there's no snow or any mist, here we can see that everything is tending towards the yellows. Meanwhile, the shadows do have this bluish tint to them. Again, this is a basic example of his style, in particular the yellowish and then the bluish in the shadow. So that's basically his style. And I'm pretty sure he shoots with a Sony a7 III or a gamma from the Sony a7s. And that's basically because of the color palette. It's kind of different from the Nikons or the Canons. They're basically very recognizable. And here we can see that this is shot with a fast aperture lens, but not a 1.4 or a 1.2. This is like a 2.8. There is some shallow depth of field, but still we can see some detail in the backgrounds. So the subject isn't completely isolated. So I would say this is a 24 to 70 G master lens. Now, again, once again, here we can see the bluish tone everywhere, but in the highlights here, we can see the yellowish tones in the feather as well of the pigeon. So that's basically his style guys. It's quite nice. It's very cinematic, particularly when you frame it like this and the colors are quite simple guys now the cut now this edit is not going to be very hard guys but we're not going to jump into hsl we're going to jump into the, the rgb tone curves and the rgb channels in particular to achieve this moody and bluish look to them so let's jump into lightroom so guys these are the photos that we're going to edit don't worry we're not going to edit all of them just going to edit one to create a preset and see how it applies and modify it in different scenarios now these photos i took in japan in my trip from two years ago i haven't been to any big cities ever since so let's jump into it. But before, just a little disclaimer, guys, I'm not taking any authority on his style. I'm not robbing his style in particular, just what I can see or what I can appreciate from just looking at his style. And I'm just going to do this tutorial to help you understand how to achieve certain and specific looks. So let's jump into it. So the first image that we're going to edit is this businessman going out of the subway in Japan. So the first thing I'm going to do is just crop it to make it a bit more appealing to the proportions of the image. Just like that, something like that, guys. Then I'm going to go to the basic corrections. Now, white balancing, exposure and contrast will largely depend on each image and particularly the lighting scenarios of the situation in particular. So I'm not going to move them. That will depend on every image that we edit. Now for the highlights, I'm going to go with a minus 40 just to bring them down just a little bit and achieve a bit more information in the brightest parts of the image. Then the shadow is going to pull it up to make the same effect or to do the same that we did with the highlights and the shadows. Then the whites we're going to go up just a little bit with a plus 31 and a minus 20 in the blacks to achieve a bit more contrast. And as we can see, this image is looking a bit more dark. So I'm just going to pull up the exposure just a bit. Then in the presence tabs, we're not going to move anything from texture clarity. We're going to put it at a minus 10 
just to make it a bit more soft. If we pull the clarity up here, we can see that everything is a bit more contrasty and a bit more sharp. With a minus 20, we'll get a nice smooth effect. Now the haze, nothing. And then in vibrance, we're gonna go with a minus 20. Now the differences between saturation and vibrance is that the saturation basically desaturates every single color on the image, while vibrance only selects or targets those colors that aren't bright enough. So in that manner, we can desaturate things that aren't too flashy on our images and making the effect less noticeable. So a minus 20 in the vibrance is what we're gonna go for. Then in the tone curve, we're gonna click on the point on the tone curve and we're just gonna put a little point here in the midtones between the midtones and the shadows and drag it just a little bit down. And in the highlight, just put the point in the middle of the line. As you can see, the image is a bit dark. Again, we're gonna compensate that with the overall exposure, just like that, guys. And then in color, well, we're not gonna move anything in HSL basically because the style is very pure. All the colors remain the same with exceptions of the bluish tones and the yellowish. So HSL and color, we're gonna leave it like that. We're gonna jump down to split toning. And in split toning, what we want to add is a bluish tones to the highlights as well as to the shadows. So 220 in the hue in the highlights. If we move the saturation up, we can see that it's a very dark blue and we're just gonna move it to a plus 13 on the saturation. Then in the shadows, we're gonna go with a similar number, 212, and the saturation is just gonna be around 12%. Just like that, guys. We we'll click this button on and off. We can see what the midtones have done, and basically they've added this bluish tint to the image. Then detail, we're gonna we're not gonna move anything but just decrease the sharpening. We want the image to be a bit more soft, like in cinema movies, just like that, guys. And then in effects, we don't want any post-crop vignetting or any grain. These images are very clean. And finally, down in cali well, not finally, we'll still have another step to go. In camera calibration, we're gonna add some rich tones to the skins, uh, in particular because he shoots on a Sony and the skin tones on Sony, as we can see, are very yellowish. It kind of looks like a person has jaundice. But in this case, we're just gonna add a bit more color to the skin tones. So first of all, we're gonna move the hue of the primary reds to a plus 12 and a bit of saturation to a 2% or a 2 or 5, something like that, guys. Then in greens, we're gonna add a bit more reddish tones to the skins once again. We're going to go with a 40 and a 16 on the saturation. If we click the button on off, we can see what we've done. And I don't know if you can see the difference, guys, but the skin tones look, look a bit more lively and a bit more alive in that respect. And finally, down in the blue primary, we're just going to put a minus 10 into the hue to add to this teal color in the overall blues in general. Now, the last step to achieve this particular look, we're going to go all the way down to the tone curve click on channel and select the blue channel in particular. Now in this tone curve, what we're gonna do is achieve that bluish tones in the shadows and that yellowish tones in the highlight. If we move the middles up, here we can see that everything in this side of the tone curve is tending towards the bluish tones. If we move it to the opposite, the opposite color from the blue is the yellows, of course, guys. So what we want to do is put the highlights to this side of the tone curve and the bluish in the shadows towards this one. So for that, I'm gonna create a point in here, move the brightest parts of the image towards the yellows, and here you can see that everything from the lights on top and every part, brightest part of our image is tending towards the yellowish tones. Maybe add another point over here, just like that. And then in the blues, I'm just gonna point, put a point here in the shadows and move a bit of the mid-tones just a little bit up into the blues. Now with Y on our keyboard, we can see what we've done. And basically his style is very subtle, and I think we achieved it quite nice, guys. Let's see how it applies onto different photos and see if we have to move any of the values around. Now this preset is preliminary, so we're gonna go over to the preset tab, hit on the plus sign and create a preset. Gonna rename it Ray Lives, and remember, we don't want to alter the white balancing or the exposure and contrast. That will depend on every single image that we edit. So I'm just gonna create it and I'm gonna jump into another photograph. Okay, so now we have this beautiful image of Keisho Kurokawa's National Art Museum in Japan. I'm an architect, so I know that. <laughs> so I'm just gonna apply the preset and see how it performs. And immediately we can see that the highlights are tending towards those yellowish tones that we saw on his photographs and the shadows are tending towards these dark bluish tones. Now, maybe the effect in this one is a bit too harsh. So in the tone curve, what I'm gonna do is just move the overall whites of the image a bit towards the bluish tones, not too, not too much towards the yellows, just to contain the yellows just a little bit, just like that, guys and I'm quite happy with those results. Here we have a random image of two cooks in Japan. Let's apply a preset. And it's looking quite nice, guys. With Y, we can see the before and after. Now, if we want the blues to be a bit more intense, what we can do is just move the midpoint 
or the middle tones towards the bluish tones just a little bit more, just like that. And now the style is a bit more contrasty and a bit more predominant. Still, what we want to do is not move this last point up, otherwise the blacks wouldn't be blacks in general, they would be something like a bluish tone. So we move it up, here we can see that the image is a bit more unrealistic and the blacks are tending towards the bluish tones. That's not what we want. Here we have another image, let's apply the preset. And this one is a bit underexposed, so here we're going to move the overexposure up. And now we can see those bluish tones really pop to the shadows and the highlights towards the yellowish tones. If we keep moving the highlights up, everything is tending towards that yellowish tones. If we move it down, everything tends towards that bluish. That's because the tone curve largely depends on the overexposure of your image. Okay, here we have another image of some Mako waiting for the train. Let's see how the preset performs in dark situations. And it's looking quite nice, guys. Maybe in this case, I would unpop the exposure just a bit, just like that. And here we have those yellowish tones combined with some bluish aura. It's a very nice effect, guys. Maybe in this case, I would pull down a bit of the temperature to make it a bit more blue to match the style of Ray Lives. Finally, we have this image again in the crossing of Sibuya. Let's apply the preset. This one is again underexposed, so let's pull up the exposure. And in this one, we can see that the effect is quite subtle, but we still have those yellowish tones in the sky that we wanted and that bluish tint in the overall shadows. Now, if we wanted to make the bluish tint a bit more predominant, just pull up the shadows just a little bit up towards the bluish tones, just like that. And basically, just like that, we have achieved Rail Villes style. And that's about it, guys. His style is quite simple. It's not a very complicated style that, like previous ones that we've done. Just remember that you can buy the preset and all the presets that we've done in this edit like series, which is linked down below. Also, you can buy my personal presets that I use every single day to edit my own photos in my personal work, my Instagram, or my professional work, which are linked down below. Also, the LUTs that I use to edit my videos. And anyway, guys, you can also support me and ensure I don't starve to death by becoming a member of my channel. And in, in exchange, I give you some presets every month. Anyway, guys, I hope you liked the video. If you did, can you please give it a like? It really makes a difference. And consider subscribing. Hit the notification bell to know how I want to upload the next video. I'm Tony Fuentes. Cheers to all of you and see you in the next one.